Elementary Quantum Mechanics. This one is by Saxon. And this is a book that a person could use to learn quantum mechanics on their own. Having said that, this book requires a lot of prerequisite knowledge, and we're gonna talk about exactly what you need to know in order to jump into quantum mechanics in this video. Um, and let's go ahead and just jump into it right away. I'm gonna start by opening the book and just seeing what's inside. Someone else signed it there too. I don't know who, who that was. You wonder, right, who the people who sign these books, are they still alive, you know? I've, I've looked them up before. I have a topology book that's signed by a gentleman who I looked up on the internet and I found him and he worked for the government and I sent him an email but he, uh, he never got back to me. He worked for the Department of Defense, yeah. David S. Saxon, Elementary Quantum Mechanics. And here's the copyright. I believe this is the first edition, 1968. That was a long time ago. I, I didn't even exist. Many of the viewers here of this channel didn't exist. If you were around in 68, leave a comment. I'm curious. It's kind of cool when you know people who are, who are older still do math. I think that's awesome. This book is based on lectures given by the author in an intensive undergraduate course in quantum mechanics, which occupies a central role in the physics curriculum at UCLA. This is, this is the good stuff here. It is a required course for all third year physics and astrophysics students, but it is taken by some seniors and many graduate students, both in physics and related fields. So, so it's so hard that grad students take it, okay? So in physics, right? So physics, this is hard. I just wanna emphasize that. So even though this is a book that you can use to learn on your own, a person could pick up this book and in theory learn, it's tough. And then here is what is needed in order to learn this material. Students enrolling in the course are expected to have had an introduction to elementary Hamiltonian mechanics to the extent of knowing for simple systems what the Hamiltonian function is and what the Hamiltonian equations are. Students are also expected to have had training, I love how he says training, training in mathematics through differential equations and Fourier series and to have at least seen many, not some, many of the special functions of mathematical physics, right? So it's, it's a pretty high bar in an effort to keep the mathematics as simple as possible. And, they're, and, they're, and, and so the authors are like, okay, you need to know all this stuff, but we're trying our best to keep it simple. However, the first two thirds of the book is largely confined to the consideration of one dimensional systems. Yeah, cool, cool, yeah. And so this is something, again, that a person could, could use to learn on their own. Um, and there's November 67, David Saxon. Sorry, I just have to give it a whiff here. So let's go through the topics. Now, let me just say, I have had some physics. I've taken um, three courses in physics, physics one, physics two, and physics three. Um, physics was the first course that I ever took where I felt um, dumb, like first college course where I just thought like I just wasn't that bright. That's how I felt uh, in physics one and two. And I, and I did okay, I got Bs. I think I had a B plus and then a B in one of them or B pluses in both. And then in physics three, uh, I got an A. So let's take a look at the contents of this. The dual nature of matter and radiation, state functions and their interpretation, linear momentum. So some of these things are familiar. I've seen some of these things. Motion of a free particle, right? Like a lot of, a lot of things here um, are familiar, right? And it's because you see them in other places. Schrodinger's equation, states of a particle in one dimension, approximation methods. Then we have systems of particles in one dimension, motion in three dimensions, angular momentum and spin, some applications and further generalizations. Some pretty advanced stuff here, right? So uh, definitely you know, geared towards physics people. This is really weird, look at this. There's appendices, right? And then look, they put the answers and solutions in the appendices. I wanna, I wanna go to that first, because I wanna show you that they do, oh, look at this. What's this? Look over Messiah? 
Is that what that says? Is that what that says? Look over Messiah? Is that an M? It looks like an M. What does, and then it has these functions here, and they want to know what they measure, and then we have this little card. Ah, uh, well, you know, if it's in the book, it stays in the book. Whatever's in the book stays in the book. I've, I have found all kinds of things in books. All kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Stamps. Stamps. I don't know what, if they're rare or not, but I found stamps. I still have them somewhere. So look at this. Let's come over here. So we have references. And then look at this. Answers and solutions to selected problems. So there are some answers right in the back of the book. Now, there's not that many exercises in the book. I'm going to show you those uh, in a minute. But look. Look at this, you know, he goes through and he makes considerable effort to explain everything. And it's just wonderful, right? It's a masterpiece of a book. I think a lot of people don't realize how hard it is to write uh, a math or a science book, especially a book at this level. Uh, it's just incredibly time consuming. You might say, yeah, it's hard because the material is hard. That too, but um, it's also very time consuming, right? It's also very time consuming. Um, because it's hard and everything has to be correct and you have to go slow. Um, so let me show you some of the exercises. So here you see, actually there's quite a few exercises here. Yeah, problem one through through 17. But in some of the other sections, let's see, only two questions here, you know. So there's not that many in, in some of the sections. Um, something else peculiar about this book, look at this. State functions and their interpretation, right? Notice how it's not capitalized. Isn't that weird? And over here, this, this is really weird. I don't know why they did that. Or he did that. Here it's capitalized, right? It certainly draws your attention to the title, though. That's for sure. I, I, ooh, ooh, what's this? Oh, we have discovered. Wow. It smells old. I wonder... I mean, this must be really old, right? What did we, what did we say the copyright was on this? 67? 67? Yeah. 68, 67. So this is uh, probably from the 60s or 70s, right? You wonder who this person was. And, I mean, they have good handwriting. Notice they write in, like, cursive. You see that? That's the sign is old school. Um, I don't know if they still teach that today in school. I don't know. Um, I used to write in cursive. I learned cursive, but now I no longer write in cursive because I just, you know, I, I can still do a little bit of it. Like sometimes I'll use some cursive symbols, like a cursive S for Laplace transforms, but I think my students hated that. And I, I did it anyways, um, and I made a big deal about it because that way my S's didn't look like fives. But yeah, cursive can be useful in mathematics. Ah, it smells amazing. Let's go to the very beginning so you see how it starts. The dual nature of matter and radiation. So, you know, you, you read through it. Okay. It's more reading. Quantum mechanical concepts. The wave aspects of particles. Okay. Some, some math here. Some more diagrams. So let's get to the exercises. There's quite a bit here. Okay, and here's, here's exercise two, exercise one, exercise two. So you have some exercises. Hmm. Linear momentum, there, there he does it again. <laughs> with the capitalization, what's the deal with that? Very strange. States of a particle in one dimension. This is cool. Ah, oh, smells incredible, smells incredible. Look at all this, wow. Yeah, long, messy problems, right? Yes, yes. Anyways, um, I will leave a link in the description to this book in case you wanna check it out. And subscribe if you want to. If you want to learn math, I have courses. They're on Udemy, which is a reputable place to have courses. 
But if you decide to check out my courses, use my links. You can find them in the description of any of my videos or on my website, mathsorcerer.com. Also check out my other YouTube channel, The Internet Sorcerer, and my other channel in Spanish, Math Sorcerer Español. Until next time, keep doing mathematics.